anyway, I was reading your email and you were talking about a number of things in there, including tinnitus and having a blockage. And you, But I got from all of that, that despite the fact that you had some initial resistance, blockages, not working so well, et cetera, that you've now found a way through it. Am I right? Or, or... I've not done any more work since then, but only because I've had the message, just to wait, just to wait and let things settle. So, okay. I do as I'm told. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, as I was reading it, as I was reading it, I got the, I got the picture in my mind. But please, I know very little about you, Marlene. Very little. All I know is what you've written to me, and etc. So I have to piece things together to open doors and so on. So if I'm wrong on anything, you always, always correct me. All right, because you don't want me going down, assuming some facts that aren't there and all that stuff, okay. So anyway, I got the impression that in your childhood, either your childhood was, was abusive, neglectful, full of rejection, that kind of thing, am I on target? Yeah, 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 it was a mixture. Well, it usually is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I, I gather there was a substantial dose <clears throat> of rejection, neglection. Was there abuse involved? There was some, yeah. My father was, was very angry and would hit us. Um, yeah, we'd, we'd end up bruised. He, yeah, yeah. All right. Is your father living? No, no. Your mother? No, no. No, okay. no my, my mother died when I was four. And then my stepmother died. She died about, yeah, she died about mm, seven years ago. Was she abusive? Uh, not physically but psychologically she was yeah right. okay yeah. and your father um where's the... i'm getting the idea of possible alcoholism yes or no no no, no. i wouldn't um no my my dad used to make his own beer <laughs> and enter it into competitions at his work Okay. Um, but not, he wouldn't drink excessively. All right. Okay. Nonetheless, from somewhere in his past is this abusive behavior. Now you're describing it as some, some hitting physical. I gather with that is also some verbal psychological. Yeah. 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 Sexual. No, not that I have any memory of. Okay. Would it surprise you if there was any kind of sexual abuse? Possible. Um, yeah, with, within the family, there are hints of, of sexual abuse, but All right. nothing do, do, you, do you have in your history blank spots in your memory from early ages? Probably lots of them, lots. I, I find it um, very hard to access, um, you know, uh, everything that went on. Um, right. Well, okay. and once, once I was, I was on a, a bus when I was really young I had four pennies in my hand to give to the conductor. I couldn't remember who I was, 
where I was going and what I was doing. And I just remember looking at this four pence and giving it to him and just being in an absolute sweat. And that's the only memory that I have of that journey. I don't know, you know, what I did when I got where I was going or what happened afterwards, just that, okay. you know, that, that terrible fear. And I don't know where I'd been before, so. <laughs> okay, so the picture I'm getting, and again, you wanna correct me, is young Marlene, who like every young child, seeks, craves, love, um, and primarily craves the love from their parents, authority figures, supposed love sources, and so on. Yeah. But for whatever the reason, you're not getting it. There's a void there. You're getting the opposite of it, some rejection, some criticism, some verbal abuse, some hitting, and so on. So that young you doesn't get the idea um, that you're loved at all. You get the, you get the opposite. They get, I'm going to, I'm going to make this up, but you tell me if I'm wrong or not. Okay. You get the idea like, I don't count. I'm not good enough. Uh, something's wrong with me. I'm not lovable and related phrases uh, on target. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that as you grow up, until those things get resolved, they kick around within your system, within your belief system. There's something wrong with you. You don't count the, you know, all that stuff. And someday, someday you find a way to resolve it like now. <laughs> <laughs> how did I, how did I do with all that? Well, I have been trying for, uh, I would say many years to resolve it. I mean, I ended up um, doing a three-year counselling course, so I had to do equal amount of personal counselling. But I'm mm. very good at, you know, the blocks are there, so okay. I, I'm very good at, at not going too deep. And also, um, I also recognise that we only go as deep as the therapist will take us as well well um, yeah you and i are going to dive into a pool okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but i also i also ended up having five years of group therapy which again didn't get to the <laughs> the, the spots that it needed to get to right. you know again so well okay I'm also hearing this thing about the, the, four, the four pennies and the bus and sweating and not knowing why. I don't know why either, of course, but I'm getting from that, that this is another clue to why you may have some blank spots in your memory. It's another clue to um, why you would have these blocks. You don't want to go there. There's a lot of fear mm. and, and discomfort in going there. Uh, I, I see, I, see, I see those things related, yes? Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. All right, that's background. Now, let me just shift for a moment. We'll, we'll get back to all of this. Okay. But let me shift for a moment. Um, you've read my book, The Unseen Therapist? Yes. Okay, yes. once, twice, lightly, once through, what? T tell me what? Three times, three times I've... Okay. I've gone through it, so, okay. and I've gone back to it as well, just to, yeah, because what I also find is that all my life, I have had a bad memory, and I've been practicing for my old age. <laughs> 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 so, you know, I've had to find strategies uh, during my work, you know, I, 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 I I'm a retired nurse of, of different, you know, midwife, sick children's, district nursing, you know, but somehow I've managed to find ways 
to uh, you know get by the poor memory. But yeah. Well, so okay. it does affect me. I have to, you know, I read something and then I think, what have I read? You know, so. <laughs> well, yeah. I try. <laughs> that does happen as we get on in eight years. I don't know your age and I'm going to be polite and not ask it. Okay. But, but I'm 81 and every once in a while, I wonder where my feet are. Okay. So <laughs> being a little light. Uh, anyway. yeah. Yeah, yeah. At any rate, at any rate, at any rate, um, Getting back to that book, I have revised the book from time to time. The latest revision is maybe three, four months ago. So I assume you've read the latest. Yes, okay. yes, I All have. Right. Yeah. At the end yeah. of that book is a segment called the Personal Peace Procedure. You recall it? Yeah. All right. And that segment urged you to make a list of 30 or more specific events in your life and bring an unseen therapist with a personal peace procedure where are you on that? Have you done that a little bit? Not at all, what? Uh, yes, I've, um, for whatever reason, it took me a long time to, you know, to even do that. I think the barriers were, you know, sure. uh, stopping me. Um, but I'm beginning to recognize that I remember one event, but then that event really needs to be split up into, different events because you know there's a lot of different angles to it all right. uh, so that's that's what i'm beginning to do all right do you um, have do you have that event handy do you have that list handy uh yes would you would you go to would you get the, would you read to me what you wrote down on your list for that particular event uh, sorry, which event for the one you were just telling me about uh, just a minute ago? The one that needed to have other other pieces and aspects um, and be split up and stuff. Yeah. Uh, this was from the age of five to ten and older. My stepmom showed no signs of liking or loving me, no life education, and. I, I wrote that and and I know that that I need to make a sentence for that one. And, so, and then I said, when I was eight years old, I did something that my stepmom didn't like. She threatened me by saying, I'll tell your dad when he gets home. I was terrified for the rest of the day. And this is this is what my mum used to do. OK, and, and I can't even and. and for the life of me, I cannot remember anything that I did wrong or said wrong. All right. But I think she was very easy to upset. All right. You know, and then, of course, it would be growing up. My dad could be so angry, shouting, hitting me very hard. So that in itself is, is an event. And, well, and, what, what, I, I'm going to stop you right there for a second. That part, that part of that book, yeah. that personal peace procedure, the specific events, the sentence it gives you to plug stuff into to make yeah. a specific event form yeah. it, it well, yeah. that is a fundamental, extraordinarily important piece in here that needs to really be understood and used well. It's like, it's like if, uh, if you're an automobile mechanic, you're going to have a hard time fixing somebody's car if you don't know how to use a wrench. Yeah. Okay, this is the wrench. That's how important it is. It's that all-purpose tool that we're that's going to show up over and over and over and over again in this advanced material. So let's yeah. let's go. I, I want to take that. I want to go through that. You have all this recorded for you, okay? Um, so you get a really good foundation on it. Now, when I ask you to tell me what you wrote down, the first one you said there was something like from ages five to 10 and, and you, you went on and on and on. That's not a specific event as no, you probably no, know. No, and I realize, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that I need to be more, more precise All right. uh, with so, that one. So let's go back to this sentence. The sentence says the moment when, and then we fill in what happened with details, okay? And I currently feel the emotion, we fill that in, about it. So if you would, let's practice on one. And you and I'll, 
get a big one, you, you know, get one you don't want to go to, okay? Because you, you and I will do it. That'll be a good one to work on, all right? One that you do remember. Okay? One that I do remember. And the further back in time you go, the more foundational it is. So pick one up and let's talk about it. I think when I was at when I started school, here's one when I was well, that, I was nine years old. That's um, all right. Um, There was a, um, a headmaster at school. Um, he had a cane that he called Horace and he used it as well, which he carried everywhere. And he also wore a leather glove on one hand. And I would hear him approaching the, the, uh, my classroom and I would just freeze. I would, and just the thought of him, just, I just freeze. Okay, now that is something, if I'm hearing it right, something that happened in an ongoing way. He was constantly carrying around his cane, his horse or whatever, and you were with some frequency afraid yeah. of, it, of his presence. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. not a specific event. That's not a specific event. There are several specific events like that most likely, but that is not in and of itself a specific event. What we really need is the moment when you might want to say when I was age nine or the moment when I was age six in the kitchen or this kind of thing. So it's making a, a better sentence out of. Yeah, I, 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 what I'm trying to do is, is get you to make a better sentence. When I was nine, I was in my classroom and I heard Mr. Upop, Upex approaching. I could see him holding his cane called Horace and his black leather glove and I would freeze. Okay, now I want to adjust that in one minor way to be yeah. more complete, okay? Mm -hmm. What you, were, what you said there was, and I would freeze. That's telling me what your emotion was then. Yeah. What yeah. we're looking for is the emotional response you have now when you recall it. Is this, often it's the same. Is it still a freeze? Are you angry about it? Are you guilty about it? Are you fearful about it? What? No, if I bring the memory up, it's, yeah, I, I I just inside, I just, yeah, <laughs> freeze. Okay, so you still freeze, okay. Now on a, we also need a scale of zero, on a scale of zero to 10, the intensity of that freeze, if you will. Is it a 10, is it a two, uh, what is it? Currently, not what it was then, currently. I would say about a six. Okay. All right. Now let's you and I talk about that event for the moment, because I want to get as thorough with it as I can. And then we're going to bring in unseen therapists to work with it, with your permission. Okay. All right. Now, just from what I've heard from you about your background, your father, his anger and hitting and all of that, I am guessing that what was his headmaster's name? Upex or something? Upex. Okay. So when Mr. Upex comes on the scene with his cane and his glove and all of this, I think I'm hearing that while you have reason to be fearful of Mr. Upex, 
you also have a reason to be over the top fearful because he reminds you of your father. Yeah. And here's more of the same. Am I hearing that right? No. Okay. Yeah. With that in mind, I then suspect, and again, you always correct me, okay? I then suspect that the more foundational issue here isn't Mr. Upex, it's your father. That's more foundational. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a specific event even further back in time having to do with you and your father or are they just all blanked out? I don't think they're all blanked out. I think they're all sort of into one. All right. You know, there, there were so many of them. That's yeah. well, all right. Best if we can to separate them out one at a time. But I understand they all seem to be the same thing. Okay, got it. And we can deal with that. But what I want to point out to you as we deal with that, and as, as time goes on and you learn more and more about this course, some of the specifics that are now not in your memory will start showing up. And then you can deal with them more specifically. But for now, what we can do, and this is a little bit on the advanced side for a newcomer, but we can do it, it's fine, it's fine. Um, we're going to make up a specific event with your father at very early ages. We're gonna make it up, okay? Mm -hmm. That may seem fictitious. OK, uh, because after all, what we make up may not have actually happened, but it's fine for this process. And the reason it's fine, Marlene, is because what we're looking for, what we're aiming at is not the actual details of what happened. We're looking at your response to it. Mm -hmm. That's what we can shift. Whatever mm -hmm. actually happened and all those details, it's like a baseball score, okay? You can't change it, okay? It's what happened, okay? But your emotional response you have now, the freeze response or the frightened response or whatever you wanna call it, that we can shift and we can shift elegantly, maybe not totally today, but we're gonna get a start on that. Are you with me? Uh-huh. Okay. No. Yeah. So what we need to do is to make up a specific event with your father. And um, let me help you along these lines, but you, I'm gonna give you a made up one, okay? But then you adjust it however you think it should, should be adjusted, okay? Yeah. So there you are at home, you are young, you are three or four years old. Apparently you did something, you have no idea what it, that it was wrong, right, or anything. You're just a little girl doing whatever you do. Your father enters the room and he is furious at whatever you did. And he hits you. And you cower. You are afraid. You freeze at that moment. Now, that's, I made it up. Okay. Would you adjust it somehow? I would adjust the age because it wasn't until my stepmother came on the scene that my dad, from what I can remember, when my mum died, it really affected my dad. Oh, it okay. really, and, and I looked like my mum. So every time he saw me, he saw his wife. You saw, you know, so that didn't help. So it was, and my stepmom was never really happy, um, you know, being in our house. So I think she knew exactly how to wind him up to then be very angry and very vicious towards, towards us children. All right. 
Okay. Good. So what age would you put on this? So I think it would be more five or six. Okay. All right. Other than that, that made up event is useful enough? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, before we bring an unseen therapist, I want to do some more things. What we call this reframing because what we want to do is we want to put as much on the table as we can for unseen therapists. Okay. If we forget things, if we hide things, if we don't want to look at things and stuff like that, that's under the table. And she's not going to, she's not going to mess around with your free will to hide things, forget things, believe things, whatever you want to do. Okay. When you're willing to let them go, and that's what this conversation is going to be like, we're going to talk about more and more things and we'll put perspective on them. So they're on the table and, we can let them go more easily. That's, that's you and I helping unseen therapists because she's not going to sit around and interfere with your free will to believe, hide, whatever as you choose. Okay. Yeah. That would be the thought police. And it's not going to happen. Not very loving to do, but we can do our best here. Okay. Now, so I want to take a look from what I understand at your father, all right? Now you're telling me here's a man who's apparently was quite pleased with his first wife, your mother, all right? Mm -hmm. Stepmother comes along and for whatever the reason she can, she can tweak him in one thing and another. She didn't really, if I'm hearing it right, she didn't really replace your mother. Uh, may have even been a little problem in there. But what I want to look at is where your father is coming from. Okay. And correct me again if I'm wrong, but I'm I'm perceiving someone who has his own in his own background, his own upbringing, etc. Maybe some rejection, maybe some abuse of his own you know, from his own. Maybe he wasn't loved the way he might want to be loved, and so on. Your mother filled that goal, that void for him. The stepmom did not. He's got a lot of unrest inside. Would I be right so far? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When somebody has a lot of unrest inside, they have to do something with it. Mm -hmm. They can either resolve it as you are attempting here with this course. Right? Or they can project it out out there and what most people do is they project it out there that's what they do they project it they it's a way in, in their own mind of getting rid of it they think they get rid of it and momentarily maybe so but they don't get rid of it totally because here it is again tomorrow okay yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. An hour, and an hour from now and, and and so on so here's all this pent-up unrest this pent-up anger that's being projected out and you are the target yeah. yes yeah. All right. Does that get you upset when I start saying these things? No, no, it doesn't. No, I can understand, you know, from, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the purpose. That's the purpose of what I'm saying in, in this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do understand. Yeah, there was, my dad's family were very poor and, you know, lots of children and, yeah. I think my grandmother was was a very loving lady, but very tough. Right. And I think my grandfather was, yeah, there were problems there. Yeah. Okay. So with that piece of our conversation in mind, I want to, this, I, I'm aiming at something, but let me build into it for the moment. It's good, which is, I think is going to be important. Um, we're efforting with this reframing conversation at a perception of your father that gives it, we're not, we're not going to excuse the behavior, hitting a child and being angry and so on. That's, we're not excusing the behavior. Okay. We are trying to understand it. All right. And so if we can understand that your father is coming from a place where he just doesn't have any, choice but to project out project out project out and you are the target 
the hope for perception in your own mind is that it's his issue, not yours. You are not really unlovable, not good enough, don't count, something's wrong with you, etc. You're just simply the target of someone else's problem. Now mm -hmm. that's me talking. That's mm -hmm. me talking. Tell me if that fits or not. No, it does. Yeah. 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 All right. I want to test that just for a moment, okay? <laughs> I'm going to give you a sentence or two to say. And if you would just say the sentence out loud and then tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true does it feel? Okay. First sentence is, um, it's, my, it's actually my father's issue, not mine. It's actually my father's issue not mine now 10 mean that's really true and zero is no no not true at all mm. there's a little bit of rumbling there right <laughs> well, maybe <what> too <laughs> that there's a bit of <laughs> tummy churning going on okay i i think you're saying it's an eight because eight eight means it's a very true statement that's what eight, that's what 10 means absolutely true yeah 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 so it, it so it's an eight true there's not quite a hundred percent true yeah 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 okay yeah. all right i'm almost there well okay all right all right um let me ask you that maybe another sentence but let me ask you something else first logically you know, I understand your emotional response. I'm not good enough. I don't count. I'm not lovable. And all the stuff that would be quite natural and, and expected, actually, for the young girl having gone through what you went through. Okay. What I'd like to know is logically, not emotionally, logically, are you good enough? Do you count? Are you lovable? Logically, yes. Okay. Your emotional response is different, however. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we, what we want to do is have the emotional response match up with the logical one. And then then you'll be moving towards freedom. Yes. All right. OK. All right. With that in mind, we're putting on the table the idea. And maybe you haven't completely bought it, and that's OK. We're, we're still working on it. OK that the re real issues aren't yours, they're your father's. Right. Eh. Well, <laughs> well right, right sort of, yeah? Right sort of, yes. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Okay, I wanna bring an unseen therapist now, okay? And uh, we'll have a little session with her. And, and then after that, we will have a little discussion and see where that went. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So this is going to be easy for you because you don't have to do anything but listen. <laughs> okay. I'm going to narrate the whole thing. All right. Let me start off with a question before we do it. Are you comfortable with this? Do you want to do this? Yes. 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 I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you would just close your eyes, close your eyes and take a, uh, take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. All right, good. And now just as a way of inviting the unseen therapist, just recall a very simple loving moment in your life and just nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. And with your eyes still closed, I'm gonna digress just a little bit because there's something about this recalling a loving moment that newcomers sometimes get confused about. And I just wanna make sure that we, are, we cover this well. Recalling a loving moment 
is simply inviting the unseen therapist. What, what some newcomers think is, oh my gosh, I'm going to invite the unseen therapist. I'm going to invite God. You know, I, I better do this right or it's not going to work. I've got to have a Hollywood moment. I've got to, I've got to have harps and angels and drums and trumpets and warm, fuzzy feelings. And it's got to be big time or it's not going to work. No, 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 no. Okay. Some people may get a little bit of that somewhere along the line, but basically we're not there yet. Unseen therapist is there. You and I are not at that level. So all we're doing here, because we're going to borrow from that pure love of the unseen therapist. We're going to borrow from that. And by recalling a loving moment, we are just doing our best. We are saying to unseen therapist, okay, we're doing our best. Loving moment. We're inviting you. That's what you are is pure love. We're now going to give you a little something to work on, please. We're listening. Okay. By the way, she's always speaking to us, always guiding us. <laughs> we aren't listening. And one of the things you'll be learning in this course is how to listen better and better and better. Okay. With that in mind, with that in mind, shift your focus now. Oh, age five or six. And we're going to go to this made up event you and I talked about before. This is because your father would frequently do things like this and you were having some challenge separating out a very specific one. So we're going to make one up and that's okay. Because what we're mostly interested in is your response, the free response. So anyway, there you are somewhere in your home, you've done something. You're a little girl, you're playing with something, you did something. And as far as you know, you didn't do anything wrong. However, your father walks in the door. The father sees what you, whatever it is you've done. And in his view, this is wrong. And he, his volcano erupts. He is angry and you're sitting there with this freeze response and he hits you and you don't even know what you did wrong, but you freeze, you freeze, you freeze at that moment. Now, unseen therapists, we've just given this event to her. She understands it. She understands where your father is coming from. And you and I talked about that. She understands He's acting inappropriately. She also understands that you have no choice being at this young age just to buy the idea that there's something wrong with you. You must have done something wrong, whatever it may have been. You're not lovable. You freeze, you're afraid. All that, e that freeze emotion, we're now going to represent metaphorically and hand to the unseen therapist. The metaphor is just imagine that this freeze emotion is like a unwanted extra vibration around your heart. Ta -ta 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 like that. Okay. You're not being asked to actually make your heart vibrate more. It's just an imaginary metaphor. And then in your imagination, unseen therapist, in her peaceful, gentle, and very understanding way, who is criticizing no one, including your father, and all the upbringing he had, she understands it. You don't understand yet, at least to the extent she does. So what she does in your imagination is sends a understanding cooling, healing breeze towards you. It enters your body. It surrounds this imaginary unwanted vibration around your heart. And with all of that ultimate love, 
all this emotion, the freeze emotion, the unwanted vibration around your heart can't survive because love is love and all that going on, the hitting and the freezing and all of that doesn't survive there. It's yesterday's stuff in a long, long time ago, but it still gets to you because you're replaying it. So she sends this breeze in, understanding, cooling, loving, healing breeze. It surrounds the heart. And as a result, the unwanted vibration that you imagine goes ta 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 And then we want to do this again. There you are. You've done something wrong. You know not what. Your father is furious. Trying to get rid of his own unrest. We're not excusing his behavior, but we are understanding it. We represent that emotion as the unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta 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 ta. Here comes the healing breeze, the understanding, gentle breeze of the unseen therapist. Ta 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 ta. Now, in your own mind, let's repeat this again. Take your time, the unwanted vibration around your heart, the unrest for your father, your own freeze response, ta 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 ta, the breeze, ta 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 ta. Do that again, and then again if you want to, and maybe again and again, as many times as you want, and take your time until such time as you think you've gone as far as you can go. Um, whether or not it's complete is immaterial. This is, you've gone as far as you can go. Then open your eyes and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. Yeah. Hi. No, I'm smiling because Instead of hitting me, my dad picked me up and hugged me. <laughs> well, it's about time. <laughs> Let me ask you, were you able to follow along with that well? Yes. Did you have any like competing thoughts or resistances no, or anything? No, no, I was, I was, yeah, I was completely All right. there. All right. Yeah. All right, good. So what ha what happened? What happened in there? I mean, I, I can see the tears. I gather their tears of yeah. of joy or, or, yeah. or happiness. Okay, yeah. All right, or release of some kind. But yeah. Anyway, what happened? Just um, going over over the scene of Dad coming through the door and my mum my stepmom telling him what I'd done. But I was already frozen during the day. So, I, I mean, I was frozen even before my dad walked through the door. Okay. So it increased, you know, when I, when I saw him. And um, I would run into another room. My dad would come after me, grab me start shouting and he would shout his mouth would be right near my ear and hitting and yeah so i think in the end i got very good at, at just shutting down and because i knew what was yeah. what was coming um sure yeah so yeah and and with the unseen therapist, um, I could just feel things just just softening, just the hardness, just 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 softening and and gradually disappearing. So I ran it over a couple more times, mm -hmm. and then thought, I'll do it again. 
and that is when the door opened and dad put his work bag down and, and, and your dad put his what down his work he had a bag that he would yeah. take with his lunch and his drink yeah to work he put that down and and came over to me and uh and and i just put my arms out and and he just just picked me up so I'm, what, I'm wondering i'm wondering we're going to do some testing in a minute but i'm yeah. i'm wondering about something your father passed away he's no longer yeah. with us okay yeah. That, that doesn't mean he's not here. He's not here physically, so we can see and touch and all that stuff. And stuff. <clears throat> but if, let's, let's make a presumption for the moment. If he's really here in some form, in some form, um, how am I gonna ask this question? Do you, do you have any sense of whether or not he picked up some love that he wasn't able to generate while here physically. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm, well, I'm sure. yeah. that's an off the wall. That's an off the wall question let me ask you this and i probably should have asked you this even before we did our session but let me ask anyway would i be correct in assuming that one of your father's biggest needs would have been love yes okay yes all right in the uh, spiritual realm there is no time there is no space and so on yeah and it's reasonable to assume he's here in some fashion yes there is some reason to think maybe he's experiencing some love thanks to you that wasn't there before we don't know that understand i'm just i'm putting that on the table for i'm sowing a seed if yes. it blossoms someplace great okay now, what, what we want to do is, is we want to test what happened with our thing. So this is, this is the way we're going to test, okay? Close your eyes for me, if you would. And go back to this made-up event. There's your father walking in the door, your stepmother's telling on you, and all the other stuff that, that went on. And your freeze response involved. And tell me on a scale of, scale of zero to 10, is your freeze response, your current freeze response, still a six? No. Higher, lower? Lower. No. Estimate a number. I think it's, it's zero. Okay. All right. Well, okay, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Now, that's a, a way of testing. Now, one of the things you'll learn in this course, Marlene, is we become really good testers because we always want to be thorough, very important phrase, okay? And we never want to be fooled by a temporary result, okay? Now, this could be a temporary result. We don't know until time goes by. Chances are, in my experience, it's not temporary. You did you kicked the center out of this really well, of this one event. That doesn't mean every event with your father and so on uh, has now been resolved in your stepmother and all of this. There's more to do. Okay. Yeah. But this specific one as a contributor to what's going on in your world, likely, likely has been put aside. There are other events, okay. Now, tomorrow morning when you wake up, you'll wanna run through this memory again, mm -hmm. all right? And you'll wanna see if there's any intensity there. Now, chances are there won't be any, but there may be some, and, and this you have to really get and understand. If there is some, 
the highest likelihood is it's going to be something we didn't put on the table now. I'm going to make something up to give you an example. Maybe when you visit it tomorrow, you may feel some intensity, but it's not about the freeze response. Maybe you're now feeling guilty about it. Maybe you did something and you didn't know what it was and you feel guilty. That's a different emotion, isn't it? Yeah. It is a different aspect to it. Maybe you'll remember something else that happened in that specific event that we didn't have on the table to begin with. Okay. That would be a different aspect. And see, what you'll be doing is you'll be learning eventually to make this distinction between what you're working on and other stuff that comes up. Very important. That's, that's, that will take you really high up the ladder when you are able to make that distinction because it'll allow you to be really thorough about it. Uh -huh. Now, I want to do another little test if I can. Okay. Remember, I'm always testing, always testing. I, al I always want to know what's left over, what's not done yet, because I want to be thorough, 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 thorough. So this time, we're going to test the very same memory, um, but a little differently. This time, you close your eyes and run that movie again. But this time you are looking, you're trying to get yourself upset. You exaggerate the sights, the sounds, the feelings. You literally try to get yourself worked up because you're looking for what's not done yet. Give that a shot and tell me what happens. I can see it going on, but it's not, I'm not connected to it. Uh, is it like you're sitting in a movie theater watching the movie out there? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's just, it's just a, a past memory and, well, is it something like this? Okay. At the time it happened, yes, pain, freezing, all that stuff. Similarly, at your age five, you may have been riding your bicycle, fallen off of it and skinned your knee and it hurt. Okay. But you look back at it now and go, okay. Uh, it, that's just something that happened. S same kind of thing? Yes. Yes. All right. I tried very hard. <laughs> you tried very hard what? I tried very hard to. Yeah. Or to, to find something else. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, good. That's a, another. We still want to test tomorrow morning. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Because yeah. you're, and if you get intensity, it's not because it didn't work, it's because something else has come up. Very important distinction. Yeah. Very important distinction. Okay. All right. Now, let me shift for a moment. Uh, you read you read the uh, article I asked you to read read this first how to take this course yes okay did you read it once twice uh what again at least three times and and referring to parts of it as well yeah okay so you went beyond it because because that, that's a list of instructions for you what that is those are that's the instruction set for this course yeah so did you, did you go beyond it did you start following instructions yeah, well, I looked through all the, um, uh, the the lessons, just you know, went through to to get an idea of um, you know uh, what the course is about yeah, and okay. and how much there is to to learn. Yeah, which okay. is enormous, but uh, right. yeah. Now that article, read this first: how to take this course. The instruction set needs to be your very best friend in this course. Now, what I mean by that is you, you need to follow the instructions carefully and thoroughly. So here's an instruction, you read it, okay? 
Ah, it says to do so-and-so. Okay, so you do so-and-so. Now you want to ask the question, did I do that right? Did I do it completely? Let me look back. Oh, the, oh, I forgot this part. Oh, oh. Now you go back again, okay? You're constantly referring back to the instructions to make sure you're doing it thoroughly. Very yeah. important to do. Uh, and when you do that, you will step through this in a way that is, things will unfold for you uh, well, efficiently. You'll really start to get your work done, but you need to do it thoroughly. If you, if you follow the temptation, <laughs> and we all have it, <laughs> this, this disease called hurry up itis, I got to get through all this, okay? That will cost you, okay? It will yeah. cost you in results. It will cost you in skills in time. So do you have uh, anything else you want? Oh, 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 one other thing, two other things. I give webinars every other Sunday, live webinars, where you can get on it, raise your hand and ask questions and we can talk about it just like we're doing now, okay? Live support in that way. And there are practice groups. Are you familiar with those yet? Yes, I've tried to connect with one, but I think the problem is that some people are in America, Pakistan, India, and the UK, and I'm beginning to think, and we haven't managed to actually have a meeting. So um, I don't know whether it's because of all the different times, oh. you know, that... Well, that's a little unusual because uh, we have enough people that are in enough, you know, places in the world yeah but one thing yeah. you can do one thing you can do if you can't find an existing group that fits with you that you know you can work with you can start your own <laughs> and you can say hey look I'm a, I'm a newbie or you can say um, uh, I only want to work with one person I just want to trade trade sessions for a while call your own shots you can do that okay okay and, yeah. and you're, you're, you're almost certain to, to link up with at least somebody and you can start practicing. Love is best when shared. That's why we have our practice group. Yeah, yeah. All right, one more test. Close your eyes. Go back to that event again. Exaggerate everything. Try to get yourself worked up and tell me what happens. No. Okay. All right. So, All right. So far, so good. Again, you want to yeah. test tomorrow morning and so on. Now, one final thing. I, this has all been recorded. So I'm going to send you the recording. I'm going to send you a link to the recording so you can download it and watch it as often as you want. The part in here, the, the unseen therapist session that we did, you may want to run that other more than just this once because you can when you get used to it you can start plugging in other specific events in there okay uh -huh. it takes a little skill to do that because we're talking about the one but, but but you'll get the idea that there's some similar things going on and you can plug in others and use those if you want is like training wheels until you get used to doing it more and more on your own and so on and then I have one other thing I want to ask you about. Um, this to me has been a very useful session for other people to learn from, but only with your permission if I can show it. Too personal? Okay, tell me. No, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I may, well, I may edit it some and make it not quite as long as it is or, or whatever. Okay. But, but the essence of it, because this, this would be useful to a lot of people. A lot of people have parental stuff, you know, and they need to get beyond it and want to get a good start like we just did. Okay. Yeah. So with your permission, then I'll, I'll feel free to use that. Okay. Yes.